Next, let's learn about micropartition. Micropartition is the most unique feature and most important subject of Snowflake. As we know that Snowflake is a column store database, we will see that how it actually stores the data. Let's do some whiteboarding. I have taken this example of product table for simplicity. It has only 20 rows and four columns, product ID, product name, price and SKU. So the first thing what, what Snowflake does, it creates the horizontal partition. So I will create the horizontal partition based on the five rows from one to five. Then 6 to 10, then 11 to 15, and then 16 to 20. So these uh, first five rows, um, one partition, and second five rows, second partition, third uh, five rows, third partition, and fourth five rows, fourth partition. And then on top of the horizontal partition, it creates the vertical partition. So based on this product ID column, based on the columns, it will create the vertical partition. So one partition for product ID, one for product name, for one for price, one for SKU. So these are tiny files under one horizontal partition. So we will call this micro partition. So this is micro partition one, under which we have four smaller files for each of the columns and then th this will be micro partition 2 this will be micro partition 3 this will be micro partition 4 so what then snowflake does snowflake add headers to this micro partition what this header will contain the name of the columns the metadata about the values and uh, it has stored and and other metadata it needs to look up these column values and then what it does under this micro partition, it compressed, compresses these files. Now it will be tiny little files because for the reason is that because it is the same data types and mostly in the data warehousing um, and the analytical world, mostly in the fact tables, the values will be the column values will be repeated. So it can be very highly compressed. So let's see uh, this the same thing in the graphics diagram. So as we see that this is um, the product table. So the first thing the snowflake does is divides this table into multiple horizontal partition. And these partitions are usually 50 to 500 MB uncompressed data. Now we saw that the, it converts into horizontal partition. Secondly, it reorganizes this micro partition into columnar format. We see that this micro partition one, it has four files, one for product ID, product name, price and SKU. So the product ID will contain the values, the first five rows, the same thing for the product name and price and SKU. Suppose there will be 10 columns, then there will be 10 smaller files. Then it adds the header. What the header contains are the offsets and other metadata like data type and the length of the values. So what is offset? Offset is kind of you can imagine is as a row ID which binds all the micro partition and all the column values. Then it compresses the data because they are in the same data type. It can be highly compressed and then it's eventually stored at as S3 file. So metadata stores uh, as we saw uh, previously from the services layer, metadata stores contains these metadata information about the columns and the S3 location. So when the user submits a query, 
the query parser lists the required table required columns and then the values the query is looking for so using those metadata stores it finds the exact micro partitions which has those columns and value range and then it filters out all other partition which are not required for the processing of the query this uh, this process is called partition pruning meaning that it only accesses the exact micro partition which it requires for the query execution so now the query processor has to only deal with tiny files tiny various micro partitions so this design is uh, read optimized meaning in this design the process of looking up the data is much more faster so here we learned that how uh, the micro partition helps this uh, helps snowflake to retrieve the data much more faster even in case of uh, billions and uh, millions and billions of records and because we saw that this micro partition we just saw for 20 rows and four columns for a million record there will be thousands of micro partitions So what we covered in this section, challenges of big data, then traditional shared disk versus shared nothing architecture. We covered the difference between a row store and a column store database. We covered the three layer architecture of Snowflake. We covered the life cycle of a query execution. And then lastly, we saw what is micropartition and how it helps Snowflake to retrieve the data faster.